All right, good afternoon, everyone. Just by way of announcements, a quick announcement, I'm going to, just going to ask these individuals to just come draw near to the tent. And I'm going to be quickly running down the list. I'm not sure if a representative from the Methodist Church is here. Miss, Miss Crichton, Miss Crichton, could you just quickly come under the tent, please? Um... Inspector Carter, Pastor Hill from the from Faith Gospel Hall, Seaford High School Principal, Mr. Thomas, the Prophecy Group is here. Just come close by because we're not going to be delaying. We have Mr. Rupert Scott, JP. Just draw close if you're here. Pastor Richardson, Pastor Chambers, 
from the Seventh Day Church of God. Pastor Oliphant, just come out of the tent. Sister L. McDonald from the Baptist Church. Pastor Francis, draw near. Sister Latia Thomas. Bishop Osborne. Asking all of these individuals to just come under the tent. I'm going to be inviting the praise team to do a short, a short, very short song service, like two song. Um, Elder Forsyth. Water will be provided for those people who don't have. In a short, in short order. Thank you.
Press him, press him. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me try another way. Good evening, family members. Yes, we may be from different congregations, but we are one family under God. Yes, brothers and sisters, and want to welcome you this afternoon as we planted this Peace March initiative so that we can reclaim the Seaford District back. We want to reclaim it back in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, I want to welcome you all from various parts of the district, whether you're from Blacksmith Lane, Babylon Lane, Navarre Lane, you're from York, whether you're from Trinity Vale supporting us, Wherever you are from, whether you are from the Church of God, Seventh Day Church of God Prophecy, I'm seeing our counselor here, I'm seeing all our ministers from the East Jamaica Conference Zone so leaders, many others who are here to support and the elders of the Zone 4 Seventh Day Adventist regime. And so we celebrate today in advance. What do you say? Let me say that again. We celebrate today in advance. Come on, give God a praise. We celebrate today in advance. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of power and of a sound mind. And we can do great things under God. What do you say? Bless the name of Jesus. At this time, we will have our praise team will lead us out with a short song service. Followed by the opening prayer from the Methodist church family. Praise the Good evening, everyone. Yes, so we are about to sing a few songs. The first one is we are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious time. We are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious time. We are going to a city where the moonlight never shines. Oh, we may not know, we cannot tell if others will be there. God himself will be our light to guide us on our way. We have Abraham and Isaac, Philip and Elijah. Moses, Joshua, Daniel in the lion's den, Peter, Paul, and Barnabas waiting for the master. So many more than I can. Say. One more time, we are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious time. We are going to a city where the moonlight never shines. Oh, we may not know, we cannot tell if others will be there. God himself will be our light to guide us on our way. We have Abraham and Isaac, Philip and Elijah, Moses, Joshua, Daniel in the lion's den, Peter, Paul, and Barnabas, waiting for the master. So Hello. 
We must bear trials and crosses in our way. Oh, they are turned the battle, the sweet turn the victory. Better days, better, better days, days are, are coming. By and by, by when we reach, when we reach the city in the sky, sorrows will be over, joy will come at last. Better days are coming. By and by, oh, better days are coming. By and by, oh, when we reach a city in the sky, sorrows will be over, joy will come at last. Better days are coming. By and by, better days, better days are coming. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. All right, so there's this song by the name of Let There Be Love. So if you know the words of the song or if you know let the there, tune, you can sing along. Let there be love shared among us. us. Let there be love in our hearts. We know that song, right? All right, so we're all going to join because we want love to be in seafood. What do you say? You know that man, that song, musician? Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Come and us, Lord, to our eyes. Give us a fresh heart. A brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. Let there be peace shared among 
Thank you very much, praise team. Even though our, our program is as is on the paper, just want to, before we go, to take the prayer from the Methodist Church by Miss, by Miss Crichton. By Miss Crichton, she'll be praying for the family, as she does the opening prayer, just want to inform you that we have a garbage bag right here. Please don't litter the premises. If you need the garbage bag, garbage bag, just beckon to Ella Forsyth, who will come to your service. Also, we are going to be going Facebook Live, so please make sure that we hold up our banners so that it can be captured. We are going to be doing that in the next three minutes or so. The cameras, I'm not too sure which one, will be doing that. So hold up your, your banners so that it can be captured. At this time, we will have Miss Crichton, who will be praying for the families of this community, Seaforth. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, this afternoon, Lord, we want to give you thanks and praise for keeping us alive. Lord, if ever a time we need the Lord, we surely need him now. Father in heaven, you have created families. And you have placed us here to live in love and unity, not war. And so today, Lord, we just want to honor you, glorify you, give you all the praise and thanks. Because there is none like you. And there will ever be, there won't be any to surpass you. And so, Lord, as we put before you this afternoon families in this community, families all over the world, but especially this Seaforth community, families that are broken, families that are distressed, families that are disgruntled, families that have, are suffering, they are mourning, and we just want to put them before you this morning, this afternoon, Lord. Look down upon them. Let love 
be shared among them. And so, Father, you are merciful. You looked on the people, Lord, and you saw in your eyes their distress. Even though they go about looking as if everything is fine, you saw in your eyes that they were distressed, that they were disgruntled, and that they needed you. And so, Lord, at this time, we know the families here, they need you. And we invite you, Lord, to intervene into their homes, intervene into their lives, intervene into them personally and collectively. Lord, you understand, you know what is happening, but you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Right, and you will, you will see us through, no matter the circumstances, there are so many things happening in our families today. Some are missing. A chain has been, a link has been separated. But life must go on. And so, Lord, we pray for strength for each family. We pray for comfort. We pray for hope. You are our hope. That one day, we, one day coming very soon, we are now seeing the signs, the signs of the end. But Lord, we now ask for strength, we ask for guidance, we ask for healing in this community. So many things are going wrong. But Lord, you know, and you will act in time. You are the God of power. You are the God of judgment. You are the God of love. Amen. And so, Lord, when you prune, you prune so that we can be better. So, Lord, whatever is happening in our lives, let us look for the positive that will come out of it. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost caregivers, those who have lost family members who were the backbone members in the family, those who have lost children, those who have lost, lost siblings and brothers, sisters, we pray, Lord, that you will just touch them, comfort them, and let them not go on as if there is no hope. There is hope in King Jesus. Yes, there is hope. So, Lord, bless each family. You know the individual problem. You know. And so we leave them into your hands. Because we know you're a healer. You're a, you're, a you're a doctor. You're a preacher. You're a lawyer. And you can solve any case. So, Lord, whatever their problems are at this time, we pray, Lord, that you will take charge. Take charge, because no other can do what you can do. And so, Lord, we, we pray that those who do not know you in these families, those families that are suffering, we pray those who have not met you, Pray, Lord, that they will meet you soon because there is no other friend like you. There is no other friend like you. So, Lord, let them take you as their dearest, dearest friend. They can confide in you. They can talk to you. You do not have to know big words to talk to Jesus. Jesus hears, even a sigh, he will understand. Tears are a language that God understands. And so this afternoon, I put them before you, and I ask that you continue to guide and direct their lives. And I pray 
that those who have not met him will do so in soon, in short order. So Lord, bless each and every one of us here and help us not to leave here without saying something, without whispering a personal prayer for the families of this community. Hear and answer my prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Crich Mrs. Crichton. Now, I am blessed with the task to steer this program, and I am supposed to be the chairman of this program. And I will be trying my very best to allow it to flow smoothly and as quickly as possible. Now, I was born right here in this community, Blacksmith Lane, just around the corner there, most of my life. And I'm very sad to know what is happening in my community. A community that I used to play football, I used to run up and down, and I used to have, I, I still have a lot of friends in this area, and my heart melt to know of what is happening in the community of Seaforth. I am personally pleading to the community to bring back the peace, the love, and the unity. And as a result of that, the, the public affairs and religious liberty, liberty of the Seaforth Seventh-day Adventist Church came up with this initiative to impact the community and to invite different, different stakeholders. And just by way of information, some of the individuals that we have here, we have individuals from the political arena. We have the, I was told that Miss Joan Spencer, I'm not sure if she's still here, but she was here. We have the caretaker, Mr. Leroy Pasley. We have in the, we have clergymen from the different churches across Seaforth. We have individuals from the conference office of the Seventh-day Adventists represented here. We have individuals from the community group represented here, Ms. Penny Cook. We have business people represented here. We have different, different stakeholders. Just want to tell you that is that sort of collaboration that we are having this evening. I don't want to bore you with all of those things. But I did not want to say all protocols observed because I know that my wife would, would really take me when I say that. So I just want to mention some of the, we have the inspector of police here, the police, and different, different individuals. So I just want to make sure that I get some of these names in before we finish. So I will just proceed right at this time. And I'm going to be inviting the Inspector of Police, Mr. Inspector Carter, M. Carter, who is going to be bringing greetings from a police perspective. Inspector Carter, are you still here? Inspector Carter? After Inspector Carter comes, then Faith Gospel Hall is going to give us this prayer for peace and unity. Help us welcome Inspector Carter. Um, good afternoon. Well, uh, you heard I'm Inspector Carter, I'm former SYC C4, but presently I'm at Mark Bay, second in charge of the St. Thomas Operational Unit. On behalf of the St. Thomas Management Team, I'm here this evening to bring you greetings and a message. This message, a little short, but I ask you to be very attentive to this message. The national vision of making Jamaica the place to choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business pays a high command on the Jamaica Constable Force. To create, create such an able environment, we recognize in order to achieve this goal, we have a very critical role to play 
helping to transform communities into safe and confident places. To this end, we are continuously looking to improve the delivery of our policing service. We believe that the success of, of community-based policing lies in the empowerment of the very last joining constable, making him or her able to work in a partnership with the communities to solve problems, Realize, realizing that we ourselves, we cannot successfully keep the community safe. We are here today all, asking all the citizens of Seaford to partner with the police as we embark on various activity to prevent murders and other serious crime from occurring in this community. No longer can we turn our deaf, deaf ears or blind to what is happening around us. Today our neighbor may be the victim, tomorrow it may be you. This I want you to do, to say this three times. Prevent it before it happens. One, two, three. Thank you. We are told that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. I encourage, encourage you all, love your neighbors and tell what you know. As we strive to serve and protect our communities and to do our best to reduce the fears of crime and the incident of crime and violence, bringing offenders to justice, each of us are therefore encouraged to review his or her commitment to the principle, values, and standards of belief by which we should work and live. The mission of the Jamaica Council Force and its auxiliary is to serve, protect, and reassure the people of Jamaica through the delivery of impartial and professional service, amen. Maintenance, law and order, protection of life and property, prevention and detection of crime and preservation of the peace. We serve, we protect, we are served with courtesy, integrity, and the proper respect for the right of all. And we speak about murder, the one last night, the 12th, since the start of the year, is the 12th murder. And out of the 12, seven of those murders are between the, the two districts we went through a little while. Out of the 12, seven are from that district. So on behalf of the management of the St. Thomas Division, I thank you all for all the persons who have been supporting, and I look forward for your further support in the remainder of 2022. Finally, we said, repeat again, we say, say it again, prevent it before it happens. Don't wait until they come to your doorstep that is time you're going to holler and cry. God bless you. Give praises to Almighty God. Let me at this time um, say thanks to the Seventh-day Adventist um, Church for initiating this um, evening's um, in engagement in the community. And this will continue as we, as we embark on seeing this community and surrounding communities um, get rid of the criminal activities. And we were here last week, uh, I'm just, we were here this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, fasting and praying um, for this evening and other initiatives that we will continue to, to engage ourselves in. And uh, we are expecting that everyone here will participate because we must see peace return to Seaforth and other adjoining communities. And um, I don't, let me just pray for that which I have been asked to pray. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer. Father God, we give thanks to you this afternoon for having brought us here on this occasion as we see our community see forth engulfed with crime and violence. We see our young men implicating themselves, engaging in all kinds of acts, making them lesser than that which you have designed for them to be. We thank you, God, that first of all, as Christians, joining together for the cause of Christ. Because sometimes, Lord, we too spread this unity. We criticize each other. We criticize each other because of our religious beliefs and practices. But I pray, God, that as of this day,
this will come to an end as we follow the scriptures according to that which is written. So I pray that unity has, which, has been, which has started will continue to be so in your church. And this will spread to this community, spread to the other communities in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray against the author of this unity, this, the devil himself. He is the one who has orchestrated this unity. It started in the Garden of Eden when he deceived the, man, the woman and the man and that bond was broken between you, O oh God, and your people. And from that day forward to this date, we see this unity has come and has separated us and we fight each other, we criticize each other. But I pray, O oh God, that this will come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. That God, you will break the back of this unity. Break, O oh God, every root in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, and as we pray, O oh God, for unity, unity will spread in every aspect, in every person, in every community, in every activity, there will be unity, O oh God. Unity by the standard of God's word. Unity, Lord God, that you are the center of. Not unity to do wrong, but unity to do what is right. Unity to please you, Lord. Because after all, this is our task. This is our mandate to please Almighty God in whatever we do. You said in whatever we do in word, it must at word or deed, it must be done as unto the Lord. And so as we speak of unity, we are speaking of unity in accordance to your word, O oh God. And no violation of your word will be accommodated and uh, are tolerated, but unity will be guided by your words. We, we know, God, we are living in a post-Christian society, a post-modern world, a, 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 a world that believes in relativism. But we know, God, that this is the heart of this unity because rel relativism is not what you have set up for your people. You have set standards by which we live. And so, God, I pray that we will be united according to your standard. And, God, this unity will bring peace. So I pray for the peace, hallelujah, of your people. I pray for the peace of Seaforth. I pray for the peace of Blacksmith Lane, Navar Lane, Babylon Lane, Moody Lane and all the other lanes in the name of Jesus. And the devil, the wicked one, the ark for, the one who is against us, who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I break every plan and plot that he has orchestrated against your people in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm praying, Lord, that this will not just be a show, but this evening will be the beginning of the transformation of Seaforth. As God, as we release your spirit in the atmosphere to tear down principalities and powers and to break every evil force, for we know where evil, evil exists, this unity will be the order. So we pray against principalities and powers. Every satanic attack, every satanic uh, 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 God, activity that is done on the lanes and the streets right across St. Thomas will be brought low by the power of the living God. And your spirit will permeate the entire landscape of St. Thomas and by extension Jamaica. Lord, we live into your hands now, our community. And I pray that your people, your people, our God, will humble ourselves and walk in this level of humility. So we may look out for the well-being of one another. I just praise you now, O oh God, for what you are doing, what you have already done, and what you will continue to, to do. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody say, Amen. Come on, let us say Amen again. Amen. As we agree in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Hill. I remember when I used to walk this community. Any time of the night, 
anywhere in the community. And I would really want this community to get back to those days where individuals, children feel comfortable to walk and to play and to go all over seafood and have fun together. And families to move from one place to the other and for business to strive and for the community to be known for good instead of evil. Is Mr. Thomas here? Principal of Seafood High School? Mr. Thomas here? All right, we will move right along. Is Ms. Joan Spencer here? Counselor for the air? All right, we'll move right along. We're going to be taking Leroy Pasley now, the counselor caretaker. I hope I'm getting it right for the area. After which, we will have a special item from the Church of God of Prophecy. Let me say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. All right, this afternoon we are, we, are, we are gathering here for a particular reason. And that reason is to bring, is to speak to peace in our community. Amen. I stand in the capacity of counselor caretaker for the C4 Division for the People's National Party. And by extension, I'm also a minister. So those of you who didn't know, you would have known it now. I want to say this. I have been trying to get us together to have an initiative just like this for quite a while. It has not been successful. However, this afternoon we are here doing the very same. I want to speak to us in this community, the young men of Seafort Division, young women, mothers, fathers, brothers, those who are committing crimes. And I remember I made a statement some time ago that there are persons here who are doing things. Some maybe be, are being paid and some are just doing it for whatever reason. I am suggesting that we stop. Crime and murder is a demon and we must fight this in the spiritual realm and we must attack it from the spiritual side. Because we have to understand that the devil is doing his created job. And so the church has a mandate or a responsibility to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen, church. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm saying it is the time now when the church must get up, rise up in Christendom, and begin to declare war in the territories of the kingdom of darkness. Because the devil must understand that we serve a God who is far above every other thing. And let me tell you this, no weapon that is formed against us can prosper unless we allow it to. Nothing that the enemy brings on to us, we can't overcome unless we give room to him or to it. And I'm saying to us as Christians, oh, some of you might have a little situation. Wherever corner you live in Seafort, I was born and bred in Seafort. I was born in Navarre Lane, not Princess Margaret, in Navarre Lane. My neighbors should plant on our apple tree. So I understand, you should understand the pain. I, I, I suffer the pain when I see that I am in Seafort at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock and everywhere closed. Business people are losing business. Children are afraid to go to school. What kind of community are we breathing? I'm suggesting that we, we come together as a body of Christ, politicians, business community and declare war in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The church must get up. Come on, church. I, I, I have been saying this. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll, you'll hear me saying it. That it is time the church understand their role and responsibility in the land that we live. We can't sit down and allow the devil, the D2 demons to determine how we live and how we walk. Amen, church. Oh, I feel like preaching. It is time we, 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 we let the enemy understand that we are called out and set apart by God. Hey, Holy Ghost. It is time we let the enemy understand that even though you are blowing a storm, the Bible said you are just like a roaring lion, but Jesus is the roaring lion. He is a lion of the tribe of Judah. God bless you. Mr. 
somebody call the name Jesus call that name again somebody shout the name Jesus I give God thanks I give God praise I greet you well in no other name but the name of Jesus on the program there is item for C4 Church of God of Prophecy but this is really a testimony my name is Newton Miller those who know me those who don't here is my story I can identify with every gangster I can identify with every gangster who said thug life I'm going to say to the church do not expect thug life to come in cut our footpants thug life wears jacket and tie long sleeve shirt and look just like me in fact I was living thug life looking just like this but I made a decision between life and death and that is to choose Jesus Christ I was falling in love with a nine millimeter. Are you hearing me? We're not here to, to, pet, put a, to polish up anything. But to tell Seaford as it is. You have gangsters living right in your house. And you don't even know. Gangsters are made up of unforgiveness. Gangsters are made up of bitterness and anger and revenge. But I made a decision between life and death and his name is Jesus Christ. Somebody call his name. Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. It might sound stupid to many who are listening but I should be six feet under on this day my memorial should have come many times over but I can sleep well at nights because of the Prince of Peace I promise every shutter every male or female because don't get it wrong even females, young girls, are top shutters. But I promise you, you can't sleep well at night. I promise you that. But there is that prince of peace. And his name is Jesus Christ. The question is, will you accept him? That's the question. Every man of Seaport, every young boy or whatever age, you must answer that question. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Let me see the hands of every male who said Jesus right now. Every male figure at the hearing of my voice. Call on his name with me. Help me. Jesus Every male, call his name again. Jesus. One more time, call his name, Pastor. Jesus. Because he made all the difference in our lives. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that powerful testimony. Indeed, God is still in the business of transforming lives. And so, with that said, the privilege is mine. Some of you may know, and I'm hoping that all of you would have known by now. I'm your host, Pastor, Pastor Michael Jr. 
of the Seaforth Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the privilege is mine to introduce to you a powerful speaker, man of God, who has been with us for three solid years in St. Thomas. Pastor Melvin Francis was a former pastor, former zone leader of the St. Thomas. Yes, Division of Seventh-day Adventists and the former pastor of the Morant Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. He now serves in the capacity as the Executive Secretary of the East Jamaica Conference. And so, he is a man of God. He is married with two lovely children. And he is here today in the Spirit of the Lord to deliver a word from the throne of God. We invite you to prepare your hearts. And just as you prepare your hearts, we invite the praise team in singing us a special. And after that, the voice of the man of God, Pastor Melvin Francis. It was such a lovely day, and the sun was shining bright. A gentle breeze was blowing my way, no storm cloud inside. Suddenly, without a warning, a storm surrounded my life. And even in the storm, I can feel the calm, and is the reason why. Whoa. 
Let the people say amen. Let the people say praise the Lord. And let the people lift their hands and say glory, hallelujah. Let the people say thank you, Jesus. Oh, we serve a great, big, wonderful God. Let me thank these young people from the Seaford Church for such wonderful and comforting song at this time. I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. Somebody needs to understand that if there is ever a man to know, it is Jesus. And if there is ever a time to know the Lord, it is now. And so I'd like to greet you well. I bring you greetings this afternoon from the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Our president is Pastor Merrick Walker. Pastor Walker has been on the battlefield from morning in other areas of the conference representing the Lord, promulgating the good news of salvation. I bring you his greetings. He sends his love for the people of the parish of St. Thomas. And he is absolutely delighted with this initiative this evening as we seek to give a message to the community that we still believe that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I also bring you greetings from the other administrator of our conference, Elder Michael Portius, who is our treasurer, all our directors and pastors and office workers. And I must recognize in a special way Pastor Omar Oliphant, who is right here with us, and this initiative falls under the Religious Liberty and Public Affairs Department of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we're so happy, Pastor, for the tremendous work, Elder Simpson, the team, and all the other denominations, clergy, men and women, who have joined us in this initiative as together we unitedly march against crime and violence. I must recognize before I get into the word, the presence of the zone leader of the parish of St. Thomas, Pastor Romain Richardson. Pastor Richardson, would you come and be recognized? And Pastor Richardson started to serve this parish just a few weeks ago. Later on, after I would have finished with the message, he will be praying a special prayer. He leads as zonal supervisor for the Seventh-day Adventist churches. We have 26 of them in the parish of St. Thomas. I also want to recognize Pastor Michael Jr., pa pastor of this pastoral district, and the other pastors present here. It's good to have you. It's good to see you, saints. Well, briefly, I'd like to speak to you. From Psalm 127 and verse 1. And as you turn your Bibles, I'd like to make special recognition of our political leaders present. And you've heard them and our law enforcers. 
It's good that we have come together for this initiative. Psalm 127 verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, and I think I'd like to take out the city and put C forth. Except the Lord keep C forth, the watchman waketh but in vain. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come this afternoon. We come because there is a God in heaven. We come because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil has stolen a march on the people. But in the name of Jesus, we are claiming back this community for God. And so we ask you now to beat back the forces of evil and give your people victory. Even through this message, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Today's gathering is a strong signal that it is not business as usual. As a matter of fact, the hour is late, and at this very late hour, the church is sending a strong signal that we are serious about making Jamaica a safe place, about making Jamaica the place to live, raise families, and do business. This island of ours, as we have just celebrated 60 years of God's blessings, Satan has gone men and who could have otherwise been engaged, been a menace to society. The church is alive and well. The church is doing something. The church is doing its job when the church takes young people and make something beautiful out of their lives. What is the church doing? The church is making a difference in society. Thank God for the church. For the church has made us what we are today. And I'm not afraid to declare that except the Lord build the house, those who build do it but in vain. And except the Lord watches the city, the watchmen waken, but in vain, beloved. Why are we here today? We are here today because we're tired of crime and violence. Let the people say amen. We are here today because we are tired of guns and gunmen. We are here today because... We're tired of our mothers and our sisters who are washing the clothes of gunmen and who are feeding gunmen and who are giving a safe haven to gunmen. We cannot talk about God building the house and God watching the city and yet we on time for the people to get serious in word and in deed. We're tired of the killing of our brothers and sisters like they are dogs, like they are animals. We are not animals. We are people, human beings made in the image of the almighty God. God has endeared people to himself and God is concerned about how we treat one another. God is concerned about how we respect one another. Today we are here because we want to see more respect for our parents. We want to see more respect for people of authority. We want to see more respect for caregivers. We want to see more respect for the people, the officers of the law. We want to see more respect for the police. 
We want to see more relationship between law and forces and citizens of the community because we have to do this work together. Oh, you must have heard the powerful saying they came for my neighbor on the left. I did nothing and I said nothing. They came. We can preach all we want and talk all we want. This work begins at home. I'm talking to some parent. I'm talking to some caregiver. Because many of us believe that it is the school that is responsible to instill values in our children. But can I tell you that according to the word of God, the work of educating your child to be useful to society begins at home. The home is the first school in the home, the parents, and by the way, the mother is the first teacher. And two of the lessons that we should give our young people, number one, discipline. Discipline. When rules are set, they should be enforced. And children should know that rules were made to be followed. Rules should be few and once enforced, they should be kept. So we talk about discipline, but the next lesson we need to teach our young people is cooperation. We need to learn to cooperate with each other. Three entities, we must cooperate with our parents. We must cooperate with the society and we must cooperate with God. And then there is the school and the church. It is in this context that Solomon cautions, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain, the strength of our society today comes from the strength of our families. Except God builds the house, we labor in vain. The values, the principles, the attitudes, God must be first. God must be last. God must be best. We are building, but if Christ is not our foundation, our building is in vain. And as a society, we, have, we are reaping some of what we have sown. For we have largely kept God away from our young people. And yet we expect them to live by the principles of heaven. We need to ask our young people and our schools and everywhere to get back in touch with the B-I-B-L-E, the word of the Almighty God. For except the Lord builds the house, we are building foundations on sinking sand. Oh, beloved, the house, the city, and the workers are all important. Solomon understood that the work of man had its place. We can plan marches and call for peace. But if God is not in the community, all of that is Futile. We must see God at work. And we must show God at work. We must tell the people. That if you serve God. God will bless you. But if you 
Go away from him and do not do his commandments. Then curses are upon you. No house building then is successful. Which leaves God out. How have we seen men build only houses with care and great cost. Only to see them crumble to pieces. Because God was not in the picture. But I sent him to the best school. He lived at a good place. I gave him a good education. But still, he has found himself in the gang. But still, in his young life, he is behind bars. Looking at spending the rest of his life in prison. We did all that we could humanly possible. But we left one thing out. God. Except the Lord builds the house. In vain the builders work. Except God watches the city. In vain the watchman worketh. But when you leave here today. It cannot be business as usual. No wrongdoer should find safe heaven. Or haven in our home. Or in our places of abode. We must send a strong message. That we must stop killing one another. And stop disrespecting one another. And stop talking down to one another. Because none of us can give life. Except the Lord builds the house. The builder. Does it but in vain. Except the Lord watches the city. The watchman waketh. But in vain. God bless you. God bless you see forth. God bless you communities. And may the peace of God. Surround this place. Like nothing else can. Because righteousness. Exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. God bless you. Amen. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. And give him the highest praise wherever you are. At this time we will be praying and I'm going to ask you to do something special for me. Wherever you are at this time, I'm going to ask you that you're gonna be, we'll be, we will be praying the prayer of declaration. We will be declaring over the community. Amen. And so I'm going to ask you wherever you are at this time, if it's possible, if you have a family or friend or whosoever, if you're in the community, from wherever in the community, I'm going to ask you to stop where you are, you'll be praying. Each person is going to participate in this prayer at this time. And you're praying. You turn to somebody. And if you know of someone who is in crime and violence, you're going to call that person name in prayer inside if you don't want to call it outside. I'm going to ask you to turn to your friend at this time and you're praying. Everywhere in front of me, your family, your grouping. Remember that if you don't pray for that person, tomorrow you may need a prayer for yourself. And so I'm asking you to pray at this time. You're praying. I'm going to give you just one minute or two minutes to talk to God and they declare over this community and then I'm going to pray. And so my family's members are right across the different churches that is here and the clergies and all the different stakeholders you're praying at this time. You're praying the prayer of declaration. You're praying, asking God to take back the lanes and homes and wherever they are. You're asking him to apply his blood wherever necessary in this community. You're praying. And as you continue to pray, I will pray. Mighty God, 
Prince of Peace, Ancient of Days. Jesus, we your children come today in this community, Seafort community. Not that we are good, but because we know you are good. So as I present your community before you, I ask and I invite your presence in me and ask you to wash me with your blood. Divine King, we come for there are some homes that are crying. We have come because the enemy have strike. We have come because the devil is behaving like a roaring lion. We have come for there's a monster called crime and violence plaguing this community. We have come because the devil have let loose his angels in this community. But we come because you declare that we, there are no weapon that form against your children will prosper. We have come because we know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. We have come because we know that in you we live and move and over being. We come because we know that you have the power to control the violence. You have the power to put the devil in subjection. So Jesus, we come. We come in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in our own strength, but in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we declare and decree upon the authority of the word of the living God that you will take back each community. We pray, God, that you'll use your blood, that potent blood that never loses power. We pray, Jesus, that you will curfew this community. We ask you, God, that you curfew this community. You will make some arrests. And when you make some arrests, God, you will arrest the, the principalities and powers. You arrest the devil who is perplexing this community and let this community know that God exists let the children of darkness understand that the children of life exist in this community so divine God we come back we come by here to take back Seafort we are saying Seafort you are under siege we come by here to let the devil know that you have no authority over this community anymore in fact God you have the keys so divine God we come we come because we know that you are more than powerful and so God we pray from the east, west, north and south in this community that you release battalions of angels. We pray God they may trump and paralyze every plans of the enemy. Oh God for that man who is planning an attack this evening. We come against the attacker for that man who is about to use the gun this evening. We say silence. We say silence. We say silence. Oh, divine God, we come. For you never lose a battle. Oh, God, we pray that as we hold the trigger, as we squeeze it, that it will not release. For Holy Ghost have released in this community. So, Holy Ghost, ride in. Ride in, King Jesus. Ride in, King Jesus. Ride in. Ride in in your power. Right in in this community. We ask me open the canopy of heaven. Come down in your copious power. Come down on every leader in this community. Every done man, we ask in the name of Jesus for surrender. Oh Jesus, the devil would have it that this community belongs to him, but not under the blood of Prince Emmanuel. Oh Jesus, you went to Calvary for this community. So your blood must prevail. So God, we ask you may release your blood now. Release your blood, Jesus. Go through every home, Jesus. Where the, where the devil's servants are hiding. And I pray, God, that whatsoever they have been planted in this community by the blood of Jesus, uproot. 
for this community must move on forward. So Jesus, as we shout hallelujah seven times, we want to give you the praise because we believe that when we praise you, something will happen. And we are shouting it by faith because we want you to shake up and wake up, Seafoot. As they shake up, as they go past you. Shout hallelujah, church. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Give him some highest praise. And then praise God. Call on Jesus. We thank you God. That you have curfewed this community. We thank you that your Holy Spirit have come in. We thank you God. We thank you God. We thank you God. That there is peace for the peace speaker is here. There is peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout his name. Shout his name. Let the devil hear his name. Let the devil hear his name. Tear down the walls of darkness. Shout his name. For he is worthy. We thank you. We thank you God. That the kingdom of darkness has been defeated. One more time. We thank you. That you have fought for us today again one more time. We thank you God. That there are some good men who is going to run to church. We thank you God. That there are some parents who is going to report. We thank you God. We thank you. We thank you. That tonight. All guns must shut up. For God has spoken. We thank you Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ we ask. And we declare it done upon the authority of the word of the living God. Let God's people say hallelujah. For God is worthy. Thank you very much. I wanted to just... Keep that poster. Keep that poster because we are running out of time. So we are going to be just asking two more prayers. Right now we are going to be taking prayer from Pastor Chambers. He's going to be praying for, for the young people of this community and the business places. And he is from Seventh Day, no? Church of God, Seventh Day. Pastor Chambers, Church of God, Seven Day, and he's going to be praying for the young people and the business places. Sorry, followed by Pastor Murray, Bishop Murray from Pastor Murray from Miracle Ministry Church. He's going to be praying for the schools, young children in our community. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, holy is your name. We thank you, Lord, that your words declare, young men, I call upon you because you are strong. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. From your words, Lord, those except Joshua and Caleb that entered the promised land were youths. And so, Lord, the time of youth is a very important point in our lives. David also declared, I was young, and now I am old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And so I present, Heavenly Father, the young people of this community, see for and its environs. My God, you know, and many have already prayed, my God, the crime that is plaguing our community, my God, affecting businesses, 
Oh, Father, oh, people are suffering. Oh, and so right now, Lord, thou who know all about us, thou who know all about our young people, we pray that you will visit them right now, wherever they are, whatever they are doing, and help them, my God, to remember, oh, that there's a day of reckoning that is coming. Oh, for God, you are going to bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And so may they turn, make a right about turn right now, as the song says, the youths of the world for the man of Galilee. Oh, the youths of the world from sin and self set free. Oh, it is time, young people, to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. For when we put him first, yes, then he will work things out for our good. And we will have the community that we long for to fulfill the 2030 vision of Jamaica. Hallelujah. Bless this community now. Take control of all our youths and bless our business community. We ask these mercies and say thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can still praise God. We can still praise Him. Praise God. Oh God, oh Father, we come to you at this time right now, Lord. We come to you, Lord God, because you are the source of everything. And so, Lord, as we come right now, we pray that you may take full control of everything. Lord, we are looking to you, God, because there is no other way, only in you, Jesus. And so, Lord, as we come at this time, we are praying for the schools. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for your blessing upon them right now. We pray for the students, Lord God, that are going to school. We ask, oh God, that you may take full control, Lord God. We realize that we are living in a time when, Lord God, violence is even in the school. But, Lord God, you are a God, amen, that can deliver. You are a God that can rescue. You are a God that can change. You are a God that can take over. Lord God, we put... Uh, Amen. All the students right now in your hands right now, Lord God. We put the teachers, Lord God, in your hand likewise. And we build an hedge around the schools right now in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you may bind satanic forces uh, Ah, it is a demon that is everywhere, Lord God. But we bind every demonic forces. We plead the blood against every forces of evil. Lord God, take over right now. Lord, when I was going to school, we never used to take machete. We never used to take guns. We never used to take ice. We never used to take scissors unless the lady is doing, uh, amen, sewing. But Lord God, we realize that all these uh, are in the school. They are taking them to the schools. Uh, but Lord God, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we come up, of every come up against every forces of darkness right now lord god because the devil oh come to kill to steal and to destroy but you are come lord jesus to bring life and there is life in you jesus so we place the students that they may learn whatever has been taught to them lord god in the name of jesus Open their brains, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that they may memorize uh, everything that the teachers taught them. Uh, 
Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we are placing them with you before you. And we also bring the parents, Lord God, before you too. Lord, because the parents, the homes that they are coming from, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we place them before you right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you may touch the homes, touch the parents, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that the Lord God, the students that they are sending out, will be good students. And as the teacher taught them, they will come out to something wonderful. Lord, we take everything in your hands right now. And again, we build an edge around the schools right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, and we place everything right now in your name, the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Lord God, you love children. Lord God, children are an heritage of the Lord. Lord God, you take them up in your arms. Amen. And you bless them. Right now I place in them in your arms again, Lord God. That as they go to school, they will learn whatever, amen, has been taught to them. Take over right now. Bless, sanctify, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Murray and Pastor Chambers. Is Miss L. McDonald here from the Baptist Church? So we don't want to miss anybody. We want to give everybody an opportunity. L. McDonald is here. She was supposed to be doing a prayer. So we are ending. We are ending, and I think it was a very very fruit, very effective gathering as we tell Seaforth that we are tired of what is happening. And we believe and we extend our faith that God is going to take back Seaforth right now. This time, Sister Latia from the Youth Department of the Zone is going to move the vote of song. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. I just want us to declare victory in Jesus. After 2 1 2. Victory belongs to Jesus. Again, victory belongs to Jesus. Once more, victory belongs to Jesus. Amen. It is uh, with mixed feelings right now that I'm standing here to give the vote of thanks. Many of our neighbors are being gone down. But we declare victory at this moment. On behalf of the C4 Seventh day Adventist Church, Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department, we would like to thank all the clergies in this community and along with the clergies from the Seventh day Adventist Church. Give them a round of applause. Thank all the members who represent us before the throne of God. Thanks to the business places, the business partners who have uh, granted us water and uh, the, the, the owner for this plaza, we thank you very much for allowing us to hold, host this um, venture to tell C4 that the church is still working and that the church is still praying for them. Thanks to all the members of the different churches Without you, this place would have been empty. Thank you. Thanks to the drum corps. Thanks to James who provided sound for us so that everybody near and far could hear what is happening at this spot. And as we go this evening, let us go with Christ and continue to pray for everyone in this community that the war will cease. 
Let us continue to pray that the war will what? Cease in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. I think we had a wonderful evening. What do you say? And I thank you for coming out, giving support, and making Seafoot, helping to make Seafoot a better place. And I wish for you Godspeed, safe travel back home, and we leave with you this very song, this very special song. And we have that song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. <laughs>